Welcome to Breakaway. Today's guest is one of the most well-known political commentators in our country today and the founder of Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk. While he may not watch sports much anymore because of the woke identity politics ingrained in the games and broadcasts, he provides a unique, fresh, and sometimes controversial perspective on the world of sports. We'll chat about why America should look like sports because of its foundational values. You'll hear more about Charlie's athletic background and life growing up as a sports fan in Chicago, how we plan on making sports great again, and much, much more. I'm I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. Welcome to Breakaway. We have the one, the only, Charlie Kirk, founder of TPUSA. How are yes. you doing? For the record, I'm wearing an old Cubs hat, not a woke Cubs hat. <laughs> Ooh. This is back when they used to love the country. Yeah. So if you look at my Cubs hat, just remember the old Cubs. The I'll ones that you still lose. <laughs> I would definitely remember. Well, they're that. still losing now, but that's a whole different Yeah, yeah, we won't talk Honored about the fire. Honored to be here, thank you. It's good to have you here. And we're not going to talk about the fire sale of, of the Cubs. We're going to talk oh, about... Oh, I'd be happy to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, why America should look like sports. And when people hear that, it's like, well, sports are so woke right now. There's identity politics yes. uh, involved in sports. But I'm talking about the foundational values of sports. Sports is the greatest meritocracy. So when you hear something like that, why do you believe that America should look like sports? Yeah, I mean, I mean, in sports, it rewards whomever puts in either the most amount of work, um, has the team that has the best strategy, uh, who is able to develop a method that is unique and entrepreneurial and disruptive. Um, sports, absent the Houston Astros and we don't talk you know, about them and cheaters, uh, is generally rather transparent in how the process unfolds, right? And we've actually seen a movement, which I've applauded in recent years for more, more cameras, more official replay, kind of more, yep. we don't like cheaters in sports, right? We don't like the wrong call to be made. A lot more checks and balances. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's, it's in some ways, it's we want who actually won to win the game, right? Where official replay is now in baseball. Uh, it's even in basketball now, right? Yep. Um, where it wasn't in years past. And yeah, the whole part about meritocracy is I say that if you're an athlete, you are a conservative. I mean, you have to earn every single inch. You can't, you can't eat a certain way. You can't be reckless for more than you know a week or two in kind of your own physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And then the whole sports component comes, uh, the whole uh, perseverance comp uh, component comes to it, and the team component, I should say, which is really interesting because if you put a bunch of talented people on a team, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win. Yep. You know, I think of uh, the. What was that? It was Carl Malone and Kobe and Shaq. The 04 Lakers. Yeah, and yeah. they were bust all over the place, right? Um, Carl Malone never won at all, if I'm not mistaken. The mailman, right? Nope. Never, yeah, won, that's never right. won a championship. Yeah, he's actually a board member of the NRA, so I have a soft spot for Carl Malone. <laughs> Utah Jazz. Another, we like the mailman. An, another, another choking Another team. choking enterprise. Thank yeah. you, Michael Jordan, for your wonderful <laughs> contribution to destroying the West's dreams. Well, I can't um, wait to talk about you growing up in Chicago. And oh, yeah, Chicago you know, we, sports, we're too. used that's to gonna winning. Be good. I know that's a foreign concept for Arizona fans um, <laughs> and for people that are mostly in non LA or tough San Francisco. Tough segment markets. for uh, producer Brian here. Uh, it's, it's a tough one, yeah. <laughs> well, look, this is what I also love about sports. It's objectively true, mm -hmm. right? So we're all arguing from, you know, you could always go back, oh, LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. We call those people leftists <laughs> because there is no argument that could be made for that. Yeah, but at the same time, too, it's like we don't want. Um, sports to look like America and be like, well, you know, I feel like we need some more white cornerbacks. Like, I feel like maybe uh, we that need to That would be a terrible sure. idea. It's yeah. like, no, that's the, there's a reason why we don't see that in yes. the game. There's a reason why Russell Wilson is the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. There's yes. a reason why we don't need to have like this racial diversity that looks like uh, totally. America. It's like the best player gets the job. That's yes, it. and it's, it's not just the, the greatest skill, right? If it was just about skill, you know, certain players would automatically waltz to, you know, the MVP. You have to put an extraordinary amount of work in. Mm -hmm. You have to be very disciplined. And then you have to be able to perform under pressure. What's so great about sports is that, you know, we, we could think of all sorts of different players that were highly scouted, but they never were really fourth quarter players, right? They just kind of shatter yeah. under under pressure and Tom Brady is the best example mm -hmm. of someone who is able to kind of it's just like when the lights when the, when the stakes get higher he just gets better right um, and same could be said for you know so many baseball players Mariano Rivera comes to mind as someone yep. who just got really better as it kind of went up the 
up the stakes and pressure. So look, if America looked more like how sports should be, then it's great. Unfortunately, sports are looking more like America. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, we always talk about in the show, like it brings people together or has the ability to bring yes. people together unlike anything else. So you're going to a game, you're high-fiving, cheering, yes. hugging people. You have no idea who they voted for, where they come from, their socioeconomic status. You have no idea if they probably want to be called they, them. Like you yes. just have the same jerseys on and you're cheering together. And there's one common goal for these teams and these cities that root for them. We want to win a championship. Yes. Well, I mean, that means you want to be victors, which is an American principle, right? Yeah. Which is that we're not going to be second to the French or the Belgians or the Italians. Um, we want to win. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our spirit of Americans is to be the best, is to be excellent. Yeah. And we've, we're losing that, obviously. Yeah. And uh, you're right. I mean, sports should bring people together. It doesn't far nowadays because of all this ridiculous nonsense. But yeah, I mean, sports are a huge part of the American experience. And um, I, I, I hope it can lead us back to healthier times. At the same time, it set the standard for basically diversity and inclusion at the same time too. Like, so for example, you got Jackie Robinson, Willie O'Ree, Louis Sack Alexis, and then even like Texas Western. So you watch the movie like Glory Road. Like the standard for diversity and inclusion happens in sports. And we, lo we love those movies, we love those stories. And then now it's like, we're seeing everybody by the color of their skin instead of the content of their play. Yeah, it's the, I mean, it's the opposite of what actually should be. I mean, sports are usually, they can be a driver for positive social change. Jesse Owens standing up to the Nazis in the 1930s is a great example of that. The 1984 hockey team or 80 hockey team against the Russians were a totally unqualified you know, team of kind of misfits beat the Soviets. You, you can, it can be a, a driver for positive social change. Now it's a driver for negative social change. Yeah, I mean, John, I think a lot about Al Davis, who was the owner of the Raiders. <laughs> he had the first head coach, minority head coach, who won a Super Bowl, but that's because he didn't care about the fact that it was a minority head coach. Mm -hmm. He just, you know, Al Davis, it was always just win, baby. The only thing he cared about was winning. And so he hired the best person for the job to get his team into the Super Bowl, and they won happened to be a minority, mm -hmm. the, but that's not the important part. The important yes. part is they did everything they could to win. But in, in general too, it's like America should look like sports when we talk about those foundational values. Coming up next, we are going one-on-one -on -one with Charlie Kirk. We're talking about growing up in Chicago, being an avid sports fan of all those teams. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. Welcome back to Breakaway. We are going one-on-one -on -one with Charlie Kirk. Hails from Chicago, Illinois. Yes. Grew up a huge Cubs fan. Not and very a, much anymore. Well, and a White Sox fan. Um, I know that's heresy. Both? I could exp I'll explain the whole thing. Yes, <laughs> not, not anymore. I don't watch the Cubs anymore because they went woke. Um, and they also traded their entire team. They're just basically like, we're yeah, done with everyone. It's not a good no, but time I don't watch professional fan. sports anymore, unfortunately. I hear about it through the grapevine, like through echolocation. You get a lot from me. Yeah, I know. I, I overhear <laughs> kind of like 20 second, you know, and I also could tell um, if the Phoenix Suns are doing well based on whether people are wearing the jerseys in the <laughs> office. It's just kind of my kind of indicator. But yes, grew up a big uh, Chicago fan. Um, and the 05 White Sox were the greatest team everyone forgets about, mm. uh, which was just great. So I, I, I became a White Sox fan simply and solely because I just loved Chicago and I wanted yeah. to see us succeed. It was the most dominant baseball team that everyone forgets about. We lost one game, which was the opening game to the LCS, and then we swept the rest. And then you loved the Chicago Bulls growing up too. Oh yeah, big 90s time. Bulls. Well, so I, I was born in 93, so I didn't get to see it. But here's the thing, is that I grew up playing a lot of basketball. And I kid you not, mm -hmm. that in all the AAU leagues I played in, that no one wore 23. And if you did, everyone stared at you. And if you did not like drop 50 points, yeah. like you were like excommunicated from the league. It's like, you do not wear <laughs> that makes 23. Sense. I'm being told you wore number 41. That's right, Dirk Nowitzki. That was your guy. That's oh yeah, well, I like Dirk Nowitzki for a variety of different reasons, right? Mm. Seven footer from Germany, um, unbelievable class act, but also he beat LeBron James in his first year with the Miami Heat yeah. after that bloviating loser started to say, not one, not two, not three, not four, with Chris yeah. Bosh and uh, Ray, was it Ray Allen? Ray Allen. That's right. Uh, and he beat him, which yeah. was beautiful and awesome. I was just a big Mavs fan <laughs> growing up, and uh, that was one of the most amazing series ever to watch. So yeah, I was a big, big Mavs fan, also big Blackhawks fan. We won mm -hmm. a lot of championships growing up, yep. which was a lot of fun. Um, Cubs won in 16, a lot of fun stories about that. Not seen a bear Super Bowl. Uh, we had sexy Rexy, Rex Grossman oh, um, as quarterback, Jay Cutler as quarterback. 
um, amongst many other things with the Chicago Bears. Very frustrating. I but you through, don't watch a lot of sports anymore. But it seems only like college football. For whatever reason, they're not as outwardly woke. And also, it's just kind of like I turn a blind eye to the wokeism if it's there, just because I love college football <laughs> so much. It is my favorite sport. Yeah. It's my favorite sport for a variety of different reasons. The athleticism is not as much as the NFL, so the plays get to be more creative. Yep. Right. Um, the, the, That's why a Chip Kelly offense is going to yeah. Win. In I mean, college, but not unless in he coaches house, UCLA, course. which is a total dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> which I, I grew up a huge Ducks fan. My uncle, yep. my aunt, and my father went to University of Oregon, uh, and so I kind of just grew up watching Oregon change college football. Mm -hmm. Before Oregon, uh, the only kind of spread offense that possibly that only exists that existed might have been. Um, maybe something that you would see out of a University of Michigan, double yeah. wide set with still tight ends. Oregon changed the whole game. Yep. They went hurry up offense, spread all the time with the most athletic people you can imagine with an unbelievably aggressive offensive line. With people, some of the sickest uniforms too. Yeah, so it was like a whole marketing campaign, <laughs> yep. right? And then Chip Kelly like blitzed around the country recruiting everyone you could possibly imagine. Um, I mean, yeah, I remember the days from Deshaun Thomas to uh, who was the super fast guy that they had? I can't even remember his name. It was it was uh, the Black Mamba. I'll think of his name in a second. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we lost the national title against Auburn in 2010 or 11. I want to say that was yeah. kind of tough to see. And then I went to the national title again in 14, 15 when we lost to Ohio State. We're never the same ever since. But Chip Kelly changed college football for the better. You seem to use sports analogies quite a bit. All the time. I, I know when we're at the rally to protect election integrity, when you're talking about like, well, usually when you win, like you got uh, DVDs. Or, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. And you uh, got commemorative shirts and footballs, basketballs, yes. whatever it may be. Like you want to show off that you you won. Yes. And here's how we won. Here's how we got Sports to are it. applicable to everything. Yeah. It's sport. Look, sports are supposed to be a way that we forget about all the kind of, you know, negative parts of our life. It's an outlet away from yeah, the politics and, and the craziest of the And world. it's also, there's an objective winner, and it, it really mm -hmm. is a transcendent experience. I miss it. I wish I could watch baseball. I wish I could watch NFL football. Uh, I'm a big Tom Brady fan, so I watched yeah. the Super Bowl. Actually, here, on this screen, uh, watch mm -hmm. beat Patrick Mahomes um, and the Kansas City Chiefs. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I, I want I want my sports back. What I do want to know is like, what do you think about some of these team name changes? So you have oh, the, it's terrible. Cle uh, Cleveland Indians are now going to be the Cleveland Guardians. You have the Washington <laughs> Football Team. Like. Yeah, I mean, it's like the Washington Football Program. Yeah, it's a joke, and I mean, I just think it's so insulting to Irish people. The Celtics still have their name. Oh yeah. I mean, how dare they? Thank God that Max Kellerman yeah. brought that up. Too. I mean, <laughs> I, I got a whole list of names that we need to get changed now. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it's 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 this perpetual era of political correctness. Change things for the sake of changing them. They had they used to have these like big protests in Cleveland. Change the Indians' name. There's like 15 people that show up, right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and even like you you pull the Native American tribes, they don't even want to change, right? And so. It's it's for a very specific purpose, which is to try to show power over a social enterprise, and you know I'm uh, I'm not game for it. Yeah, they better not change Chicago Bears. <laughs> Don't you? I, I think the Bears are safe. Like I think if you have, you have an animal, um, Peta I think is going to start to make a big big play for it. I think Peta is going to say, "How dare you have the Bears, the Cubs, the Bulls?" I don't know. We'll see. Because what we do, we're changing those names, and then we go to animal team names, and then Peta's getting after us, and then we change them to just like colors, and then the colors yes. just obviously just disgusting. I can't believe you come up with, with those colors. Like the Red Sox, I don't know. Someone's gonna find a oh, way. Oh yeah, someone's gonna say the White Sox are white supremacists. <laughs> Very soon, I'm telling you. Heard it here first. <laughs> of course. But coming up next, we're gonna talk about how to make sports great again. Charlie's gonna give his take on that, exactly what we can do to get sports back to being a unifying outlet away from the craziness of politics, the craziness of the world. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. Welcome back to Breakaway. We're back with the founder of Turning Point USA and the guy that gave me the job for the show, basically. So thank you <laughs> for that. You're doing a great job, I <laughs> appreciate that very much. We got to talk about how to make sports great again, because sports we talked about consistently on this show. It's a unifying outlet away from the craziness of politics, whatever's going on in our lives. We need sports to get back to that place. But I know you give people some great points about, hey, some of these woke companies, this is what you can do yeah. to fight back. So what can we do right now to get sports back to being unifying again? Yeah, I mean, I think the owners need to start to take a stand and you don't need to pander to these very overly entitled social activist athletes that think they can just call, kind of call the shots. I mean, it really is gonna be an interesting question, John, of how 
much these leagues are going to tolerate. Like the NBA, they're basically a Chinese enterprise, so they yep. can just go to ch mainland China. The NFL doesn't really have that option. Mm -hmm. If the NFL has the decline that they're experiencing, which is double digits, it's 10 to 15% down, you would know the numbers better than I would. Um, a lot of the business model is going to get kind of put into jeopardy. They're not going to be able to sell the NFL to China. It just doesn't resonate no. with them. It's just it's not it's not a sport that they quite mm -hmm. are in their culture yet. Maybe it will be soon. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I mean, it got, also we just need to stop taking these people seriously. Like LeBron James is, you know, he's a petulant child and he's not that good. I mean, people think he's this wonderful athlete. Like yeah, he's super gifted and he's got great teammates, but he's a choke artist yeah. and he also has really bad politics and he's yeah. unbelievably stupid. And so, like, we just got to kind of just say, you know what, you should be kicked out of the league and go serve in Wuhan. Have a nice day. Yeah, there is a little bit, like, obviously, like, LeBron is a very, very talented guy. But when we go into, like, the finals, but, like, talented finals at record, losing finals, yeah. at, like, talented finals at having great teammates. <laughs> like, I mean, without Anthony Davis, would he have won, you know, the fake NBA title of the bubble? Probably oh, not. I don't, really, and eventually, I don't really count that one too much. All players want to leave LeBron eventually. Because he's a jerk. His guys don't stay with him. They don't yeah. want to play with him. I think this comes to, like, journalists need to do their job. The media needs to do their job because you're just letting people like yeah. LeBron just, like, run rampant. Like, he says something about Daryl Morey that he is misinformed about he's China. Like, clown. ask him why he believes that. They so won't. if you believe they're being hunted, like, journalists need to do their job. And especially we talk about the Mizzou hunger strike, all these things, all these journalists are terrified to be called yes. racist. They're terrified. Um, to be seen as a, a white supremacist, like all these stupid buzzwords well, that are used, they need to do their job. Well, look at the demographics of the NBA. It's probably 85% black, may, probably more, no. right? And that's somehow like a racist institution. Mm. Like they've made more black millionaires than any other institution that I've ever thought of. No. And so, yeah, I mean, the way we fix it, I mean, hockey's done a great job. Yep. Hockey has stayed patriotic. They've stayed loyal to their fans. They, I mean, the Canadians are even- <laughs> A very Canadian yeah, I mean, sport. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's- the Canadians are kind of, I guess, more enlightened on this than we are. Well, and Charlie, that makes me kind of wonder, obviously you're really good at putting out action items. Yes. As conservative sports fans, what should we expect from the leagues before? Because, you know, during the pandemic and all this crap that's happened over the last little while, we left. We, we abandoned yes. a lot of other sports leagues. Mm -hmm. What should we expect out of the leagues before we go back? What should we expect? I mean, yeah, I just want my old sports back. I yeah. mean, I want the NFL of 2000. 13 when it was kind of enjoyable to watch yeah. i mean i want i want the kind of old uh what was his name russell sherman that psychopath from oh uh, you're talking richard sherman yeah richard sherman <laughs> i miss that kind of nfl yeah. that was about like trash we need taunting and, back no totally yeah. you know you gotta get that competition spirit back so i don't know I, I i want i want the nfl that i grew up with back i want the major league baseball that i grew up i want the aj pierzynski smacking that guy in the face back from the <laughs> chicago cubs that was fun oh, and man. um yeah no charlie's like oh charlie wants to bring back the brawl hey you want to remember the 04 brawl with was 04 05 you're talking about the pacers oh the, pi the pistons oh the malice in the palace oh malice yeah it was great palace. with with uh meta meta beta piece or whatever his name Runner is test. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. meta uh, world piece yeah a, <laughs> beta no, uh, <laughs> meta 91 <laughs> when they just threw the beer at him he just yeah. charged into the stands you can't make that tell i mean wwe raw has been trying to get back at that level of television yeah. excellence i'm half kidding john <laughs> what i'm saying though is that the owners have to start to take responsibility and leadership mm. and stop kowtowing to a small group of woke activists when in reality our country wants sports back we want them back in a non-woke way i don't want to be told how racist i am i don't want you to be a social revolutionary and quite honestly most of these players are sick of this crap too yeah. i get messages from these players all the time i won't say their names on here because they'll be canceled uh, all throughout the nfl all throughout the nba they're messaging me I was just in Vegas, the NBA Summer League was going on. I had probably 10 NBA players come up to me. And of all different, you know, backgrounds, colors, and what do you mean? They're like, Charlie, we love your stuff. If anyone found out we followed your stuff, we'd be canceled. I have a special Instagram account where I just follow you because they found out that I was following you on another Instagram account. <laughs> burner I'd be followed. Following Charlie I was like, Kirk. burner NBA accounts following me. I kind of, it's like very Soviet. It's really interesting. <laughs> Finally here, I think we can end on the point of we need to talk about this stuff because there's an absolute blowout of leftist politics on ESPN in a bunch of these broadcasts. It's intolerable. And like, so many people are starting to acquire wait like oh if you start pushing pro-american stuff like that's just overtly conservative it's like no like we just need to be pro-american in our sports yeah, again I mean, and let's talk about this i remember major league baseball growing up knowing that the, they tried to burn a flag at the chicago white Sox game and the guy came and stole yep. it mm -hmm. like that used to i remember back when i mean yeah actually the diamondbacks did win a world series back in 01. Luis that's Gonzalez. Right. we hit it off of mariano rivera i wanted to say that earlier but that's I didn't right. get the chance it was randy <laughs> johnson and kurt schilling was that 01? 01. that was a great team oh phenomenal. the big unit was that when he killed the bird <laughs> 
It, he did that in a in a cactus league in a preseason game, but I but loved yeah, that. that was so great. <laughs> I encourage everyone to go look up Randy Johnson killing the bird. <laughs> I mean, this would. I mean, I, I, all I have to say is this: is that the the the, the ESPN had an identity crisis when Mark Sanchez couldn't take a snap and the same play <laughs> kept on being over and over again re-voted as the worst possible. And then ESPN had an identity crisis. Remember the butt fumble on Thanksgiving oh, Day? Oh yeah. I remember seeing it live. It was so Shakespeareanly tragic. I said, there's nothing that will ever outdo this. For 530 straight days on ESPN, it got voted as the worst possible take. And then ESPN had an identity crisis. And then they went all woke. I think they're directly related. We're gonna have Charlie Kirk on the hot seat. 40 second shot clock, we'll see it in a little bit. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. This is the 40 second shot clock. Welcome back to Breakaway. Charlie Kirk is in the oh hot boy. seat. Let's start it. Three, two, one, go. Favorite player growing up? Growing up? Yes. Oh man. Uh, Dirk Nowitzki. Favorite sports team right now? Right now? Probably the Chicago Blackhawks, but they're terrible. If you could play any NBA player, past or present, one-on-one, -on -one, who would it be? Oh, I'd, Michael Jordan, just for a chance to meet him. Well, who's the greatest athlete of all time? Michael Jordan, not even a question. If you could own any sports team, who would it be? Wow, that's a really good question. Phoenix Suns, because then everyone could go to the games here. <laughs> Least favorite athlete of all time? Least favorite athlete? Oh my goodness, that's a great question. Um, Derek Jeter. All right, last one with three seconds left. Which politician would make the worst athlete? Oh, wow. Uh, Barney Frank. <laughs> Barney Frank. <laughs> well, that is the 40 second shot clock. Charlie, thank you so much. Producer Brian, always a good time. <laughs> Well, that is it with Charlie Kirk. I'm sorry we don't have any more time, but really it's appreciate right. you jumping in. Boom, producer Brian. Always Let's good time. go. But make sure you join us next week for another authentic, unwoke sports conversation you won't hear anywhere else. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this episode so we can keep the conversation going all week long. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway.